Hello, everyone, and welcome to It Lives Under Your House. The DLC to horror visual novel I Live Under Your House, in which we took on the role of an inhuman monster living underground. Now, I was really interested in that game, not just for its horrifying writing and visuals, but also for the fact that it kind of placed you into a reverse perspective on a cryptid horror story. Having you play as the monster and learning to understand its mindset, while also being very aware of how these events might look to the human characters in the story. Now with a title like It Lives Under Your House, it sort of makes me wonder if it's not going to be flipping perspectives once again and have us see this from a human role. Maybe even the role of the human characters in the main story, just from their side of things. Now, if you haven't watched me play the first part, I can't imagine this won't include information from that, so I recommend you go and watch that first. But, let's get started. Chapter 4. I'm not a coward, but I am scared. So it is a direct continuation. The lights are out and the door is open. I don't like the look of this. All right, I'll just check to see if anybody's home. Oh, look, and the aspect ratio even expands so that we can see the entire thing. Am I to assume that this is the house from the main game? If that's the case, and we do assume that the third ending is the canon one, then our old protagonist is currently living here. Ah! What a disgusting smell. Yep, this is the place. But it seems that since last time, some modifications have been made. That window being open suggesting that our friend is still out there. It's a human brain in a trash can. Who am I that's coming upon this? He's been out hunting ever since. What is going on here? What kind of maniac would do this? Marie? No, that doesn't look like Marie. That's... Have they found somebody new? I don't want to head down to the basement just yet. The whole floor is sticky. The box is full of candles. Okay, take those. We know that you need those to complete the ritual and destroy this monster. I am 100% going to be treating this as if you've seen the first part, so please, please go and watch that first if you haven't already. Oh. What is this place? And what was that sound? That almost sounds like a human song. It didn't just move in here, it made it an extension of its own burrow. There's a deep tunnel in front of me with no end in sight. Are you sure you're ready to go into the tunnels? Now I'm not sure if, like the main game, this DLC has multiple endings. But I'm gonna go in. Okay, we do have a flashlight, but it really doesn't illuminate very much. Press Z to crawl. Oh no. Oh no, this is going to be so dark and claustrophobic. But finally, we're getting to see these tunnels in person. In full 3D. What is that? That's a hard hat. 
This must have come from the worker when the house was being built. Worker's helmet. If there's even the slightest chance that it belonged to him, I can't turn back. Oh, maybe... Maybe I'm the other of the two workers. The creature said that it could only take one. There's just enough of an angle to this tunnel to force me to look in a different direction. Look, I'm pointing my flashlight forward. That's almost pure blackness. Uh, which does beg the question, how was that creature living down here able to see? The tunnel seems to be getting narrower and narrower. And you know, that creature did... Well, it was basically insane. Maybe it just had some weird sense for it that it interpreted as sight. We're getting an alternate perspective on a perspective we already know. That is interesting. This DLC, so far, really has potential to be complementary instead of just an add-on. The air is getting heavier to breathe. Now, if I were you, before trying this, I would be looking in the piles of human remains up top. Uh, just when I thought it couldn't get any more cramped. It's so narrow, but I think I can get through. I hate caving so much. I hate caving. If I put a flashlight in my mouth and crawl like a worm, I think I can do it. At the rate we're going, we might just become a worm. Well, here we go. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, uh, This is horrible. My arms are clasped at my sides. The only thing left to do is to push myself with my feet. Why do you have to tell me that? I almost have to cover my eyes for this. This is horrible. It's getting harder and harder to breathe. But I don't have a choice anymore. I have to move forward. I was about to criticize that, but really, you can't turn around in here. You really do have no choice once you reach this... Oh no. Oh no, I think I'm stuck. I can't move. I'm definitely stuck. Come on. No, you can move. You can move. Just keep going. I don't want to die in some hole. I need to pull myself together. If I can push all the air out of my lungs, I can get through, but then you'll have limited time and energy to do it. Come on. Just a little bit further. This is legitimately panic-inducing. Come on. I have one last push left and I'll get out of here. Come on, exhale. I practically felt myself unable to breathe with that. I can't believe I managed to get through. But I would be quite hesitant to try and get back, which means... The only way out is through. Please don't get any narrower. Please not again. I don't think I can do that again. I hate cramped spaces like that. If you want to see an example of like one of the worst moments of my life, uh, go check out my Urbex video from a couple months back titled The Tunnel of Note. And that was nowhere near as bad as this. I didn't like that sound behind my back. Yep. Great, it's collapsed. The passage is completely blocked. I'll have to find another way out. You know, from a game design perspective, you didn't need to do this. I honestly would have accepted the explanation and my guy just will refuse to go through that again. My guy looks out for his buddy. I'll give him that. A 
Okay, so I've been hearing that scratching sound, and I think it is just supposed to be me crawling through this tunnel. There's not something else moving around in here with me. Uh, that's a skull. Under the skull lie withered branches of flowers. It looks like a kind of totem. If you look closely, it's as if someone has scraped the inscription, Spirit, on the stone. Looks like I've stumbled onto some kind of cult or something. I hope the author of this work isn't home. This is the exit to the surface! And that's the spirit, just further going to show that the creature is an example of an unreliable narrator. Haunted by visions of what is really just the skull of either one of its or some previous victim. Maybe even the first victim, which may have been Marie's father. What was that noise? And what is that rumble that seems to grow louder as I progress further down the tunnel? branch off here. I've never had a trypophobia, but this place makes me feel uncomfortable. It's different in appearance from other tunnels. I don't think it's been dug. I need to find a way out of here as soon as possible. What do you mean you don't think it's been dug? Do you think maybe it's been eaten through like a worm? I mean, they are almost perfectly cylindrical. Just a bunch of pebbles. They're pretty smooth. Hmm. They're nice to hold. Do not let those thoughts take hold of you. I haven't completely given up on the idea that the creature we were, the creature that's down here now, may have once been a person. Or at least come from something that may have once been a person. That would mean that down this way, down this way we'll find the cocoon. Or perhaps this is the sleeping chamber? I don't like this. I don't like being able to see up there. Wait. Oh no, I'm, I'm all turned around now. I don't want to get lost. I want to make sure that I see everything. But this just goes deeper and deeper. That's a drop. Okay, no, I have to go back. I can't go back. Oh no. Oh, I may have locked myself out of some things. I'll come back and check later. That almost sounds like a dentist drill. I feel like I'm crossing the border into the afterlife. I had a similar feeling once before. Yeah, your text is crossing the border as well. There's definitely something magical about it all. It's like when I was a kid and when I was drawn to different abandoned buildings. Okay, leave the commentary to me. I almost died once, too, back then. It was an abandoned hospital. A popular place for teenagers. Guys would go there, climb on the roof to smoke and look at the stars. I didn't go to the roof. I was more interested in the basement. I even went there all by myself. Sometimes walking through these tunnels, I could suddenly stop and turn off my flashlight. And so one day, I stood once again in the darkness, listening to the wind walking through the tunnels. Suddenly, I heard a loud sound like a demonic scream. 
It was the scraping of metal mixed with the clash of granite blocks. It echoed through the corridors. I became unimaginably scared. I started calling for help, but there was no one to answer. But I got out, found a way out of the other side of the building, and when I went outside, I saw that half of the building had collapsed. Several teenagers died. They were sitting on the roof when the building collapsed. After that incident, I began to take more and more risks. I liked the adrenaline. I decided to become a police officer because it gave me the opportunity to be on the edge all the time. But these tunnels, there's something different here. I've never felt this way before. It excites me and frightens me at the same time. Wait, so I'm a police officer and not the other worker. So maybe I'm investigating that worker's disappearance? Alright, let's continue on. One minor nitpick, it's very unlikely that half of a building would just collapse like that. I feel the air has changed, so there must be a way out somewhere. You do tend to start to notice things like that when you're underground. There is actually a difference in the air when you're close to some kind of exit. I actually started to welcome the sight of crickets uh, because it meant that there was probably a hatch nearby. dead end. I'm not sure which chamber this is meant to be. Perhaps the main one? Seems like a dead end. I just feel like that thing will come back at any moment. Seems like a dead end. Well, where else can I go then? Oh, it descends even deeper down. This opening is even narrower than the previous ones. I need to think carefully before I go in there. Well, it's not like I have another choice. Then again, if you couldn't breathe in the previous one, this should be a very clear no-go. Oh, come on. Mash space, mash space, mash space, so this part can be over as quickly as possible. I can feel fresh air coming from somewhere ahead. Well, that is a motivating factor if ever I've heard of one. Anything off to our side? This opening is even narrower than the previous ones. The main thing is not to panic like last time. What was that? What was what? Maybe crawl into here for a little break? Oh no 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 move 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 please don't be timed please don't be timed please don't be timed Ah! I can only hope that my leg is not broken. It collapsed on top of me. This is like my worst nightmare. The other leg seems to be free. Maybe I can push off with it? Ah! What a pain! It's no use. I hated that sound so much. I can feel my ankle hurting in sympathy. I can still press space to try an inch forward, but it's no good. Help! I, I can't do anything but keep trying. Help. Screaming is just wasting your... 
breath. Uh, the game just sort of tabbed out for a second. I don't know if that was part of it. Help me! I've been down here five hours. What is this perspective? How did it all start? I've been out of work for two months now. Yeah, there were a couple of cases, but absolutely uninteresting, and it paid little. I even thought about going back to the service. Huh. Of course, no one would take me back there. The whole town will never forget what I did. Then this man came in, all scared. He told me his name was John Nada, and he worked at a construction site far out of town. Oh, we're like a private investigator hired by the other worker. Nada told me that he worked with a friend whose name was Bob, and Bob went missing. He went to the police, who refused to help him. He wasn't from around here. Uh, essentially a tramp. Nada did his job, and the house was finished. He saved up money, and now he came to me. He just wanted me to find his friend. I decided to ask around the owners of the house that Nada was building. Maybe they knew something. And now here I am. No. I can't give up. I have to get out of here. Uh, man, you're gonna have to 127 hours your leg if you want to get out of this. Come on. That crack makes it seem like my leg is indeed broken. I'm not gonna die in some hole. Real struggle to get this bar up, but... And it does go down if you don't constantly keep up the pressure. It seems to be working. I'll be free. It worked. Oh, it feels so good to finally stretch out. To feel the ground beneath my feet. So, my leg isn't broken? Uh... There's an edgy band down here? I mean, I must say I like it. It's like those groups that set up shop in the Paris catacombs, but... The directionality of it almost makes it seem like it's coming from behind me. Well, let's continue our jaunt. This game really does have a fitting soundtrack. Which is why this is a little different. It feels like we're in the home stretch, but that definitely can't be the case. Uh, a thought just hit me. Are we finally going to get to see this creature firsthand? What it actually looks like? Oh, we've been wandering for such a long time, I keep dreading the moment I see something appear in the darkness. The longer it goes on, the more I anticipate it. The more I feel like the next inch has to be the one. This has been going for a real long time. I really hope that... This isn't one of those things where I turn back and find that I haven't progressed at all. I'm starting to think that you didn't really feel fresh air because we are farther from any kind of entrance than we've ever... Oh, never mind. Huh. Freedom at last. It's great to feel the ground beneath your feet. Stretch your arms out in different directions. The sound of the leaves. What happiness it is to be outside. There's no way I'm going back. There must be a road somewhere ahead. 
I've got to find help and get those cops to do their job. Yep, we did find a huge amount of human remains. And the creature learned how to manipulate spotlights. This is a horrifying new evolution. Is that a leg? This is my leg. Oh, I'm still here! I'm still here, I'm still here. They really got me with that. Wow, there's one time where a fantasy sequence was actually done well. Oh, the way it makes you, it almost makes you feel like your lungs are filling with fresh, cool air and then it hits you with that realization right at the last moment. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. I hate this place. I hate rocks. I hate the dust. I hate that my whole body is stiff and I can't straighten up. I hate sand. I just want to get up. I just want to straighten my back. I want to bend my knee. Oh, how I want to bend my knee. My leg hurts so bad. I want to bend my knee. I hate... How I hate everything. Get me out of here. Somebody get me out of here. Help me, somebody. I won't be heard. I'll never be heard. I'm stuck, stuck, stuck. Why did I come in here? Why did I come here? What did I want? I wanted to help. I wanted to find this guy. That's all. Why didn't I call the police? Why didn't I leave? I wanted to be a hero. I wanted to be useful. Oh, forget heroes. Nobody needs heroes. Heroes get stuck in holes and die. I was going down into that dungeon like I was going into battle with a dragon. I was expecting a maniac here. A horde of killers I was ready to fight. I was ready to defeat evil. This is what I'd been taught. What I'd been prepared for. Not this hole. Not this hole. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Maybe that's what I wanted. Maybe I just wanted to die already because I was sick of everything. Because I don't have a job. Because no one needs me. No one needs me. This place needs me. This hole needs me. I'm becoming that creature. I'm tired. I'm very tired. My eyes are closing, and I must rest. 27 hours. This is something different. Something's happening to our vis- Is that it? Look, I can see legs and a pair of arms swaying back and forth. And what looks like a glow from head level? So you're finally awake. I've been waiting for you. Though I think you've been waiting for me just as much. Who's there? Get me out of here! Come on, Nick. It's not all that fast. Don't you like it here? You've been here so long, I thought you liked this place. Screw you! Well then, I should probably go. No, no, please stay. Help me. I'm stuck here. Please don't go. Don't go. I I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't go. So it wants me to stay. It wants to get out of here. Yes, please. I don't care who you are or what you did. I didn't see anything. Just get me out of here, please. Please help. So, it thinks I own the place. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just a bystander. Let's just say the owner is away on family business. But you can't have a house without a master, can you? I can get you out of here. But I'm going to need something from you. 
Anything. I'll give anything. Just get me out of here. Anything? Bark for me, Nick. What? I thought you were stuck, not deaf. Bark. Bark for me. Does it want to get out of here? It has to bark. Woof. Louder. Woof, woof. Louder. It should bark louder. Woof, woof. Louder. Bark. Whine like a wounded animal. Come on. Woof, 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 woof. Oh my god! Yes, bark. Bark and lose your name. From now on, you'll lose everything. You will have no past and no future. You'll become a creature persecuted by perpetual hunger and loneliness. And you will serve us for 13 long years. In return, I'll free you from these shackles of stone. But your flesh will belong to us. Remember, your flesh belongs to us. And we shift back into that familiar perspective, seeing the tunnels through the vision of the creature. I open my eyes and here I am, home again. What an unbearable feeling. Even though I've been here as long as I can remember, I hate every inch of these tunnels. This place disgusts me. I can't wait to get outside. The coldness, finally. The air is so fresh. I like to listen to the crackling of the trees. To enjoy the slight whiff of the breeze on my skin. However, all this is only a moment when I'm distracted and my thoughts start to get confused. What are thoughts anyway? How do I know what thoughts are? How do I know the words? I have no memory of my past life, but in the subconscious that guides me, there are remnants of it. All these words just pop into my head on their own. And the more I try to understand where the source of all my knowledge comes from, the more it begins to hurt. A hunger begins to grow inside me. It grows stronger and stronger. The voices in the tunnels tell me to kill the tenants of this house. But I don't want to do that. Even though I'm hungry. More and more I stop understanding myself. Something pushes me from side to side, forces me to be in constant motion. But there are also moments like this when I stop. They seem to be going out for a walk. It's time to return to my underground abode before they see me. But I so want to stay here for just one more minute. Inhale, exhale. Okay. There's no point in going back. Hunger will kill me. I have to do what I have to do. Still, I would rather not offend anyone. If only I had a choice. The end. Ah, oh, that was insane. I'm not sure if we became one of those creatures, were turned into one, or if we're just some kind of offset, some host that allows itself to propagate itself. I'm not even sure if the creature we encountered was the creature from the original game, or just something meant to watch after the tunnels. Uh, this is so cool. It really is complementary to the original. And interestingly enough, this would play very differently depending on whether I know the story of the original game or not. So you truly could play these 
different parts in either order, even though it does definitively take place after the end of the first. Now that would be really interesting to play the DLC first and then the main story. Alright, well, we head back and let me just check the achievements to see if there were multiple endings. Yeah, there are two more that I don't have. Oh, we could actually examine the bed. I don't even want to know what happened here. There must have been more tenants even after Marie and Mark. Now back in this chamber, we never went down that way. Uh, there's also very conspicuously a hole up above here. Uh, here's the pleasing stones, and there must be something more down this way. Oh, the tunnels diverge. It's the skull room. And I get the hello friend achievement, which means there's only one left, and that's probably a different ending. You know, on a second playthrough, this is actually sort of reminding me of the elevator fake-out ending in Lost in Vivo. Been a while since I mentioned that game. Yeah, so that played out the exact same way, except I found a few new things. I'm thinking that in order to get the other ending, I probably just need to Far Cry this thing and refuse to go in. I mean, you won't be able to see it, but if I open up the Steam overlay, it's the Escaped DLC. I'm not a coward, but I am afraid. Maybe the only winning move is not to play. What happens if we just turn right back around and get in our car? I don't like the look of all this. Should I just leave? Yeah. Screw it. I've seen enough in my life. Let someone else deal with it. And there we go. Well, that's that. 100% completion. By the way, I really love this artwork. The look of headlights reflecting on a wet road surrounded on either side by a low wall and trees shrouded in fog. All covered in this noise and green filter. And that soundtrack, it, at least this track, kind of reminds me of Silent Hill. But yeah, that was It Lives Under Your House, and certainly a worthy follow-up to the original base game. I believe it only came out like a month later, so it's certainly a companion that's meant to be taken together. Like I said before, I find it really interesting that it's sort of a different story depending on which you play first. Like, you sort of get a different perspective on what happened if you were to play the DLC first, and then the main game. Whereas, if you play it in order, you know what happened, and you're kind of a more afraid for this character going in, wondering, essentially, when you're going to encounter yourself. It really is a cool way to play with perspective, and the DLC really expands on that in an interesting and unique way. Well, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.